The deputy who lost his job for not confronting the Florida school shooter apparently did not tell the truth about his response. Deputy Scott Peterson claimed he thought the shots were coming from outside the building. But a radio recording released by the Broward County Sheriff's Department indicates Peterson knew the shots were coming from inside the building. We don't have any description yet. We just hear shots, but it appears to be shots fired. Broward, do not approach the 12 or 1300 building. Stay at least 500 feet away at this point. The deadly shooting that killed 17 people is leading students from around the country to push for more gun control. But one student from Stoneman Douglas High School is launching his own effort to prevent school shootings. Kyle Cashew discussed his ideas with President Trump yesterday, and he's joining us this evening. Thank Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. What was it like to meet the president and the first lady? It was quite amazing. They were so outgoing and welcoming and uh, really responsive. Did, they, did he know the subject? I mean, did he, what, what did he ask you about? Of course you knew the subject. We, uh, we talked about what, um, what implementations and my opinions about the subject and what I thought was best to do. Now, when you see and hear these recordings, what, uh, I mean, I can't imagine going through this, and I'm sorry, you know, as a young man, that you had to go through this. But when you hear those recordings and you know that there was somebody armed with a gun there at the facility, what, what runs through your minds when you hear that, that recording? Look, it's, it's absolutely terrible that they let the students in the building be sitting ducks while he had an armed weapon and he could have went inside and he, he, let, he let the shooter roam free in the halls knowingly. So it's seemingly he waited for everyone to simply just die in the building only then to enter. And that's really heartbreaking. What, uh, what do you want to see happen? What do you think should really happen next? Well, I think uh, the Stop Prevention for Violence Act is um, extremely, would have prevented this completely. And um, I'm really proud to say that it's a bipartisan effort that's got 15 Democrats and 15 Republicans in favor of it who, who, who um, signed up. Who now, you've actually on. been up on Capitol Hill, right? You met yes, with uh, Senator Hatch. Uh, who else did you meet with? Senator Rubio, uh, Speaker Paul Ryan, and uh, S Senator Murphy, as well as uh, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. Oh, you've you got the A-list. Well, that's, that's good. And what did you tell them? I mean, what was your, give me the quick pitch. What did you tell them we needed to well, do? Well, look, I talked to every single one about my concerns and opinions on the Second Amendment and what we had to do to protect it. And I, I specifically sat down with Chris Murphy, Murphy, Murphy and we discussed what had to be done. Um, although we disagreed on what we had to do for gun control, we did, the senator, um, we, did, we, get, we did find a common ground. And I think that was most important, as in we represented that there was a bipartisan effort to make a change. And there are issues that both the left and the right can agree on. So where is it that, where's the common ground? Where do you see that there's actual agreement? I think the Hart Bill specifically shows. What does it do? What does it say? I basically harden students, it hardens schools, it gives the funding necessary for the technological advancements to, to make sure we're safe. It uh, increases communications between um, the school and law enforcement. It, uh, it makes proactive prevention um, to make sure that we can properly register students who are um, having mentally ill or um, having like mental um, um, issues that might act out. And, and the governor of Florida, Governor Scott, signed a bill today into legislation. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that bill? Do you there was one thing that stood out to me, and it was a big concern, because right now we have people in the military, age 18, serving and defending our country. However, we don't protect our own citizens who are legal age to vote and have the mental cognitive ability to vote to have the same weaponry. And I think that's really hypocritical. So you, would, you don't believe that there should be two different thresholds as to where you can actually purchase a gun. Do you think the gun, that that age should be higher or should it be lower? Should it be 18 I think or right now if, you are, if a voter is able to vote at age 18, that means we register they have the cognitive ability, the proper cognitive development to do so. And if they have that cognitive ability, then they should be able to also have the same rights as any other adult. Now, there's also some proposed legislation or some thoughts on legislation that there should be able to go out and get some sort of restraining order on people that can't distinguish right from wrong. You supportive of that or not supportive of that? Well, I'm really supportive of making sure that people who have mental disorders and not mentally stable cannot acquire weaponry. Because at the end of the day, a bad guy, if you're not mentally stable, you shouldn't have a gun. And you're developing an app to help with this. With, do you have a name for it yet? Yes, sir. It's called the Reach Out app. And what we're doing is we're allowing students from the same school um, develop emotional connections and um, solve their emotional issues in school without any federal government funding. Uh, it's great. The state of Utah is doing that as well. Um, and there's, uh, there's an app out there that we're students and 86 parents, lives saved. 86 lives saved with this app in Utah. And I hope they duplicate it around the country. I'm sorry that you and your, your friends, and you're too young to have to have gone through this, but thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.